Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ English. The Climate Risk Index, CRI, 2026 has been released by the German Watch, an organization that periodically evaluates areas in the world most affected by extreme weather conditions and climate disasters. And in this report of 2026, that's the CRI report, which was recently released in the COP30, that's Conference of Parties Summit, that's being held in Bilum in Brazil right now. The report has highlighted that India is ranked ninth. Yes, India has a ninth position among various countries that are majorly impacted by climate-oriented disasters between 1995 and 2025. This also highlights the rising human and economic toll that climate change has been taking on the lives of various communities, a topic that's very important for GS Paper 3, Environment, Ecology, Disaster Mitigation. So now quickly, let's see what is the report all about and which countries are on the top when it comes to the threat of climate change. So here's a brief picture that's created as a part of this new climate risk index report. It shows that there are certain countries who are at the top when it comes to bearing the brunt of climate change. And now coming back to the details of the report. The report is an analytical index. It analyzes and then it categorizes various countries by an organization called German Watch. The countries are then ranked in a hierarchy from one onwards to see how many countries have actually suffered when it comes to human and environmental impact of extreme climate events, that is EWE. And I think we in India can relate quite well to this phenomena because recently we saw how Uttarakhand and Punjab were dealing with flash floods. In fact, even Chennai experienced a cloud burst situation. We recently also saw how in India, this time the monsoon rainfall was much above average, about 4% extra from last year. Yes, it has led to flooding in almost all the low-lying and coastal regions. So we quite understand what does it mean to face the impact of an extreme weather event. And it is also true that it is always vulnerable economies who face a major disaster, much more disaster as compared to the developed countries. Why? Because our coping mechanisms are quite weak. Now, looking at the report, the report is annually being published since 2006. It has been published annually. And although it is not a binding United Nations index, but then it is widely used when it comes to United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, as well as IPCC discussions. It's a very commonly used report. The objective is ultimately to quantify, to quantify the impact of extreme weather events, to see what kind of GDP losses do country have? What is the mortality rate associated with disaster? And what happens then to the affected population? All that are covered under the report. The report also highlights loss and damage suffered by people and therefore it is a major it is a major ask, it is a request being made to the developed countries to now finally take up their climate finance responsibility. A topic that we have spoken about earlier as we were discussing the COP30 summit in Brazil. So let's understand this report here is being created by using lots of data. Data from organizations like International Monetary Fund, World Bank, various other bodies. And then the data is used compiled to see that which country is facing how much human economic impact of disaster. Another thing is that this report understands disaster into three categories. One is the hydrological, which is related to flooding, glacial lake outburst, for which Nepal, Uttarakhand, states like Sikkim were also in the news recently. Then you have Meteorological, in which we talk about storm, cyclone. Ultimately, it's about climatological, including heat waves, wildfires. So it has a different category here. And the total finding of the report is quite shocking. If you analyze it as a case study for your UPSC GS Paper 3, it says extreme weather has caused 
8,32,000 deaths the world over, impacting about 5.7 billion people. And look at the economic impact of this. It has led to a loss of about $4.5 trillion. Now, does this remind you of another demand? Another demand that's being made at the COP30 summit at Brazil, conference of parties right now in the Amazon basin, in the Amazon area. What is that demand? The demand is that today various countries are asking the more developed countries like US and EU nations to now finally understand their common but differentiated responsibility, CBDR under which during Paris Agreement 2015, various industrialized countries had promised that they will be providing about $100 billion annually to help the developing poor countries to shift towards renewable energy, to cope with climate disaster. But then this promise was not met. Ten years down the lane, we realized the promise was a farcical promise. It was a farce. It never came true. So today the countries are saying by 2035, we would need about dollar one trillion, way more than the earlier promise. And it's high time countries like America, rather than turning their back towards Paris Agreement, come to understand that all countries are committed to reducing their carbon emission under nationally determined contributions under Paris Agreement. But not all the countries have the same capacity. And when it comes to the developing ones, Yes, they need some help from the developed countries and that's the whole concept of carbon pricing. That's the whole concept of carbon financing. Here also, the report, the CRI report that we are discussing has also said the loss has been about 4.5 trillion and most affected countries are Dominia, Myanmar, Honduras. Remember, these are also the developing poor countries. And at the same time, there are certain countries that are constantly in the threat of climate change, including India, Philippines, Nicaragua and Haiti. All these are under continuous threat category. So this also highlights the need for carbon financing. And now if we look at another concept that has emerged from the report, then that concept is FRLD. What is the concept of FRLD? When we see FRLD, we are looking at loss and damage fund. What is that? Loss and damage fund. It is a fund that is operational within the COP30 framework. It is basically a fund that is a mandatory financial instrument, which means, yes, the developed countries will have to support the developing countries for all the harm and all the damage that has taken place owing to climate or extreme weather events. So this is about creating a fund. It was promised long back. It was promised during 2022, COP Summit 27 at Sharm Al Sheikh. Now, when I say Sharm Al Sheikh, does it remind you of something else also? Egypt Summit Sharm Al Sheikh. Recently in 2025, another summit happened at Sharm Al Sheikh, but this time it is related to signing a peace pact between two countries who have been at war for decades now. So which are those countries and what was that pact? Do let me know in the comment box. Coming back to COP. Yes, in Shamal Sheikh, it was promised that one loss and damage fund will be created under COP. It was designed to finance economic losses, all kinds of losses and damage to prioritize support towards most affected countries and communities. So once again, today, various countries are highlighting the need for this fund at the COP37. And now looking back at India, yes, we have the ninth position among countries which are the most affected under this new report released at Bilim, Brazil. We are also witnessing that the global south is far more vulnerable as compared to the global north countries because all the top 10 in the list of this climate risk index are all developing countries. They are all the global south countries because they face a persistent threat. For example, India, Philippines, Nicaragua are all categorized as continuous threat countries, which means in future also they are highly likely to face more frequent and repeated extreme weather phenomena. And this makes discovery expensive and challenging. We all have seen various floods and heat waves and storms. And the kind of infrastructure toll that it takes 
That's exactly what the report is saying. And the report also says that over 8 lakh people have died because of 9,700 extreme weather events. There are certain examples. 2008 Cyclone Nargis, one of the most worst climate disasters that actually killed about 1,40,000 people. It also led to displacement, refugee crisis. There is another category that's called climate-induced refugees or climate refugees. People who have to migrate from one region to another because of the threat of extreme weather events. That further creates vulnerability among population. Yes, in 2024 alone, floods affected 50 million people followed by heat waves. So all that is being pointed out by the Climate Risk Report. Excellent pointers for you to use in your GS Paper 3 answer writing. Also, we should remember about Shamal Sheikh. We must remember about the COP30, CBDR, Common but Differentiated Responsibilities, the loss fund that we just spoke about. So do remember all that. And now if you look at India, India has also suffered from about 430 extreme weather events in the last 30 years, impacting a billion people and more. At the same time, cumulative loss, if we calculate that, it's about 170 billion dollar more than 80,000 people were killed in an aggregate in all these events so which means that today if we are among the top 10 countries identified as risk prone then possibly we should continue to be the voice of the global south to meet with other like-minded countries and to keep pushing for more climate finance and more transparent cbdr india recently also said at cop30 that do not change the structure of Please do not change the structure of COP. Do not change the structure of Paris Agreement and CBDR. Climate financing is integral to that structure. So quickly the question, consider the following statements regarding Climate Risk Index 26. One, the index is published annually by German Watch. It tries to assess long-term human economic impact of extreme events and it uses various data. Yes, IMF. Yes, the World Bank as well as EMDAT criteria and data. Second, all of the top 10 most affected countries in this index of 26 are all global south countries and three, India ranks first in terms of overall long-term vulnerability in the CRI 2026. It's quite an easy revision question. Try to answer, post your answer here. If you have a perspective, if you have an opinion, a vision, if you want to share a topic for discussion, do let me know in the comment box. But I request you to keep it non-political and UPSC relevant. And now a quick reminder about the ongoing sale that we have, but it is no ordinary sale. It is the crash intense training program that we announce for success in Prelims 2026. Yes, it is a last golden opportunity of its own kind because sale ends tomorrow, 15th November. Sale promises you GS Paper 1 and CSAT preparation thoroughly with revision, timetable and counselling. Please apply today because the price is 4999 Unbelievable. And we promise in return your success in Prelims 2026. And with that promise, do not forget Code Splive. Use Code Splive, enroll for the sale today and allow me to become a part of your preparation journey. And with that, for those students who are writing UPSC 2027 at 18999, an equally lovely offer, GS Paper 1, 2, 3, 4, CSAT, Prelims, essay, optional, everything. Optional at a discounted price. And timetable and revision. All language mediums included. Evening batch, morning batch, weekend batch. Everything that suits various aspirants, whether working or whether still students, please use code SPLIVE. Sale ends 15th November. And now, one last announcement about UPSC 2028. If you still think it is time, Use that time wisely. Take the benefit of this course, 32999 only, but sale ends tomorrow. Use code SPLIVE, engage with the sale, allow me, allow our team to be a part of your journey. Thank you so much.